Steve, do you feel in a way that you started late? Because you had, you know, you were, when I first knew you, you were Team GB, Team Pursuiter. And you did that, and then you went to Discovery, and then to Barlow World, and then to Sky, and then to, and it, it seems that, you know, you've clicked into your role in the sport quite late. Or is that just one of those things you think looking from the outside? No, I just think I've been fighting all my career to fight, to, <laughs> to, uh, to, fighting with myself and fighting with anyone else who wants to fight about um, about the way to, to, that works well for me and um, sometimes things don't go your way and and then I don't know bosses or whatever get angry but it's always been about the process to me not about really not really the results and, and even this year like I haven't done anything different than last year just had bad luck. So you I mean, do you feel that kind of bike riders in some ways aren't actually very well treated in, in, in the teams because the team is such a structure and the team continues and it's the bike riders who come and go. So you perhaps keep your job a bit longer if you always do what you're told to do but Ultimately, if you always do that, then I don't feel, I'd never felt like I'd get the best out of myself. So I needed to go and do things myself, which has enabled me to get the best out of myself. But it's also cost me a few contracts and changed a few teams a few times. Like a lot of British riders, you've been through Sky. And you were you the first year of Sky? Yeah. And you didn't ever seem to quite click with, and then you went from Sky to BMC, which are where quite similar teams in that they're quite well yeah uh, no sky i was good. i was all right i did some good results in sky yeah i think the thing was it like i was never going to win the tour de france and they wanted a tour de france winner i've always believed that i could win on the right situation so it's just trying to find the right team who backs you and then yeah. everything needs to kind of align because it's not like i'm a sprinter or a climber yeah who you know i'm not calf i can't win 30 stages in the tour i have to do it a different way in some ways it makes sense you living in Tuscany, but possibly because of the way Team Sky have ridden, and they're such a quintessentially British team, the way you ride a bike doesn't feel very British to me. Sky is, is like a business and they want to make a... They want to be sure, and I understand that, but cycling, it's not a business, it's a, it's a, it's a sport, it's my passion, it's what... Uh, and that's... It's, it, Italians are working for passion more than anything. Yeah. It needs to hurt, and, it, and that's... If you believe in it, then it... You have to believe in it. Do you find, do you like the hurt? Is that? Uh, I do actually, yeah. yeah. Yeah, when I start to get fit, I really enjoy it more and more because I can hurt myself and hurt myself and hurt myself to the point of almost it doesn't hurt anymore. It's my wife's favorite trophy, like the only trophy she has out. Um, and it's from the Tour of Med in 2014. Pretty cool race, it's got a lot of history. Yeah, and that's 2014, so that was with, was that BMC or? Yeah, with BMC, yeah. This okay, is yeah. from China, just, it was, when we were flying back the day after the race, it was on the front page of the Chinese <laughs> news. That's my ashtray from yeah. China. Ashtray? <laughs> oh, we're team thing, yeah, we won that for the team. From Tour of Beijing, 2013? Yeah. yeah. That's from the tour in... Uh, oh, was that a tour, tour stage win? Yeah, in 2015. Wow. That's, I love the fact that kind of what you get as a trophy does not tie up with the, the race. Because that's quite that's quite understated, but it kind of, if it sits in a corner, you wouldn't necessarily. Yeah, no, we don't normally have it out. It's just uh, we got it out because you were coming around. Yeah. But uh... <laughs> so you know, what, when when you're really fit, what what's the cue? Well, how do you know you're really fit? What's the kind of the the thing? Because most riders have a kind of a, it's it might be how fast they can get up a particular mind, or it might just be a feeling. Is there any? So it's a whole spectrum. It's not like one effort, or it's not uh, one session. It's a whole it's a whole thing. So I'm looking for everything. Um, the scale tells me a lot, the, the, the feel on the climb, I do the same climbs, you know, not every day, but more or less in every few days I'm doing the same climbs and you can just feel a lot, the power. Are you a scientific trainer? Because what you're talking about, the Italian, the Italian, the Italian-esque training, the, the passion, the, the hurt, do you like to look at a number on a power meter? I use everything, so I use yeah. everything, but uh, I'm not a guy who is obsessed with watts now. No, no. But having said that, it's it's really important because that's like bread and butter stuff. Yeah. It's really important. But I'm not going out stressing if I'm 10 watts down or 20 watts down because that's life. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it's kind of understanding why you're 10 or 20 watts down. Tactically, you may you have the reputation for being tactically very astute, and you know. I have to be. I've got no chance. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, where did where does that come from? Because I still think of you as a trackie. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, and that's just historical. And it's a bit of a shock in a way to realize that you're not a tracky, you're a top smart road guy. And that's, again, that's one of the things people say about, about Steve Cummings, oh yeah, smart guy. I don't think I was ever a tracky, to be honest. I just did the track because it was a way, way through the system. Um, it gave me the, the, the funds to you know, follow my dream. Um, I'm very grateful, but it wasn't really, it was never something that was super passionate about. But um, it's hard to explain. Understanding training, the more you understand training, the more you understand aerodynamics, the more you understand where you, you, the characteristics of yourself, the characteristics of other riders. Absorbing all that and remembering it and having it in your mind in the heat of battle. Yeah. I'm always very calm in the race, but it's kind of strength that gives me that uh, um, time because I'm not so desperate because I know, I know I'm strong. So you know you can fix it with your legs. If you take half a second, you can go, yeah. yeah. So, um, and then, yeah, like you say, it's just paying attention and watching. Is, is there anything that, that you feel you really took forward from, from, from BC in, yeah. in that era? Masses of things. I'm very grateful to BC. Um, the, the planning was one thing. Um, don't get me wrong, it's not that I follow it to the T, I have to take elements of it and use what's good for me and throw the clutter that's not so good for me out. But uh, yeah, the, the planning, uh, the attention to detail and a lot of, uh, I learned a lot of things, psych psychological things that have helped me throughout my career. Yeah, because I mean, obviously those kind of events are big for me. Because everyone forgets there's, there's an Olympic silver medal in your drawer back home from, from Athens, which is one of those things, it's nearly... It's nearly before BC were any good, if that makes sense. It's, it's long, it feels a long time ago now, and people, I think, forget that. Yeah, I was never a super confident guy. I'm, I'm more confident now, but, you know, when you're young, um, you, sometimes you need a big result like that to give you, to, to say, oh, I really belong here. So show us around. What have you got on here? <laughs> We've got a time trial bike. Yeah, my And recognise a time trial bike. Yeah, my TT bike... Um, Nothing really that special. Do you, do you spend a lot of time training on a TT bike? Once a week I use it, so yeah. Once a week? What do yeah. you do? Just Three hours on it. Just so, steady? Uh, no, no, no. I, do, uh, <laughs> ne I never go steady. If never. I'm going on the bike, I go to work. So, uh, yeah, I do rentals. Yeah. Bit of medium, bit of threshold. Depends what time of year and what, what's coming, but I, ne I always ride in anger. Always ride in anger? Yeah, yeah. Or That's a great phrase. The, or I don't go on you the bike. You should make T-shirts with that written. Yeah. Down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Always ride in anger. <laughs> a trophy from um, Pays Basque. Uh -huh. This trophy is from my first day at work with MTM Quebec, uh, a stage win in um, Mallorca. Uh, okay. Quite a good way to start. Yeah, start like a mean to continue. Scooter. Scooter, yep. You're saying this is your kind of your investment scooter? Well, yeah, I bought it and I went and got married. When I went to get married, I went on this. Certainly for, for fans in the UK, I think the, 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 the quintessential Steve Cummings win was the tour stage two years ago in Mons 2015 with Thibaut Pino and Roman Bardet looking at each other a bit and you came blasting past. And every fan in the UK stood on a chair and cheered. It was one of those moments. And to take a stage like that, I mean, how much of that is planned in advance? How much of that is looking at the road book as soon as you see it and thinking, oh, well, this is a stage for me, and how much of it is, is on the day? Yeah, honestly, it was a, like in that team, we were underdogs. So, um, yeah, of course, the dream was a stage. Um, I was happy to be in the tour. We picked five stages, or I picked five stages that we were really going for, where we thought that this in the right situation. And to be honest, uh, that was one of the stages, but when Pino and Bardet were there and Uran and there was Yates there as well, they, on paper they all climbed better than me. So then it, it becomes a little bit like, bloody hell, it's going to be really hard to win now. But um, yeah, just stay calm. And I wasn't really thinking about winning, I was just trying to get up the hill as fast as possible. And then at the top of the hill I thought, well, I can see them. And then, then you know, then it was like almost it was like, no way I was going to lose. Well, the thing was that it's always kind of, when I went and watched it before coming to talk to you, and always in my head, like everybody else, I think they have the vision of the two of them and you on off. And actually, you went by them. And then there was like a kilometre to the line of pure pursuiting. Cause Unfortunately, I had to tap the brakes because they both swerved across the road. <laughs> Otherwise, it would have been done and done with a K to go. But uh, now my first idea was uh, to try and gap them a little bit in the corner. 
obviously I've studied the road book. I knew there was, I'd done the finish before in Paris Nice and uh, I knew it anyway. So uh, just try and gap them a bit. And I knew as well, it was Pino and he's cautious in the corners. I've said it before. And uh, if, if you could get a meter or two, yeah. that was it really. You kind of, you, you're, past, you're past Pino and Barde down that finishing straight and cross the line. I'm guessing the point where you cross the line into your first Tour de France stage win is quite an entry into a different world. You have to remain rational until you've crossed that line and then the emotion comes in. Because that must have felt incredible. It really genuinely does make everything worthwhile, like it makes your career that moment. It took me months, you know, to realise like what to do yeah. next because it, you, it's a dream that you can sort of keep at the back of your head and you have your goals to, to get you towards your dream. but. It was pretty far-fetched at some points in my career to win a stage in the Tour de France. So, and then all of a sudden, bam, you do it, you know. I probably was getting to that point where I thought I was never going to really do it, so. And the second stage, is that, is that worth, does that feel the same again or is it worth less because it's the second one or is it? Just tactically, it was really, really good. Um, and then, yeah, I was in the shape of my life probably that, from that period, from the Dauphiné to then. Um, and even when I attacked, I wasn't sure I was going to do it. It was just kind of, well, let's see. Also, you, you're still from the top of the Aspen. It's not over. You've got to go down the hill and stay rational, stay calm. Your palms are sweating. Nibali's coming after you. One of the <laughs> best descenders in the world. Uh, a minute's not that much, you know. So. I mean, your thing is you want a stage in the Vuelta as well. And the thing is, they're all grand. That's another grand tour. And you think, well, that must be, but the tour is that much bigger than the Vuelta because that was back 2012, wasn't it, the MC? Yeah, no, the Vuelta was really cool because the break was stacked with good riders again. Um, and the, the numbers were like crazy that day. And uh, All great wins, but you know, lovely to see. Everyone loves watching you cross a, cross a line with your arms in the air and your jersey half unzipped. And... Thank you. I, I just hope <laughs> I can do it again. It's like I say, sometimes you have the best form in your life and you don't win. And other times you don't have the best form and you win. And, it, and it's just being mentally positive and putting yourself in the right position. I'll tell you on both stages of the tour, well, maybe not so much last year, but certainly 2015, I was on my limit about 10 times just to get into the break. That was before we even did the final, so. Never, never give up? Yeah, just being, me like, like I say, mentally tough. You make being a professional bike rider sound very simple, Steve. Let me just kind of, we've got, you know, you just get your training done, you do your training, you get out, you get on with it. If that's six hours in the turbo, it's six hours in the turbo, it's whatever it is, your aero on the bike, you know what watch you've got. You mean, it sounds very simple. I think it is, I think it is. I think it's really simple. I think it's just people overcomplicate what is a simple thing. You're often relying on the, the scenario at the start of the race. And I can't really affect that, so it, yeah. I'm just pretty cool about it. The Aspen win last year, was that planned? That was a stage that had marked down. Yeah. I thought I'd missed my chance, I think, the day before. I thought that was a, would have been a better chance for me, especially who was in that group. But, um, but again, it's rational, isn't it? Because you're presumably thinking, well, I've got this many watts. And well, yeah, just the, the other thing is, as well, is the cooperation behind. Like, it's not just that Nibali's going to sit on the front and pull five riders with him, there's always going to be an element of doubt. And every time they doubt each other, yeah. maybe I get a few more. So this um, is... Your gnome, you have a gnome. Yeah, this is like Perla's little garden and a house. And then uh, this is a gnome I got. Um, it's typical Basque kind of thing. The hat's like a yeah. traditional Basque. This is his <laughs> bottle of cider. His hands. And his hands, and I got it for uh, winning the stage. And uh, I can't remember what, well, his name I can't pronounce, so I just call him Igor. In terms of the Basque, which like someone's this, got a real culture that you get something really odd. This is super cool. Like, yeah. I don't know if you've ever been to the Basque, but they're super proud of their culture. Yeah. And, uh, I really like that. You seem to get better with every passing year. <laughs> well, you know, you're one, if, you, if, you talk, if you talk to other pros and you ask sort of someone who's in their late 20s about kind of, oh, you're, kind of, you're approaching 30 and so on, you're one of the guys that they all say, yeah, but look at Steve Cummings. 36 and getting better every year. Well, I think this place has helped me a lot. Um, the lifestyle, like I say, and I, I'm like a, if you're like a student of the, the way of life, the way of training, and um, like every year you can make a tweak and make it better. And 
Um, it's very relaxed here and I'm very relaxed. So it's, uh, it's like a way of life that, suits you, yeah. that suits me. And so when you mean if you're working from year to year, you're always looking for the next gain. You're never kind of settling and saying, right, I'm here, this is what I've got. It's, there's all kinds of like, you just, when you say gains, there's, there's different, there's, you can always be a bit lighter, you can always be a bit stronger and it's just trying to find how and why, but consistency is key. And not just consistency over a few weeks, consistency over months and years. And do you ever think about retiring or are you? Yeah, I do think about it. Um, I still want to race, I still, there's still races I want to win. I still feel I can, be better. How are you as an injured rider? Because you've got you collected quite a quite a collection of broken bones. Because you had was it collarbone, clavicle, sternum. I got that right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Impatient, angry, frustrated. No, 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 no. I'm not. Uh, it's I'm like very philosophical about it. It's part of the job. If uh, maybe when I was younger, I was a bit more of those things, angry. But now it's just like, okay, this has happened, just deal with it and get on with, do the best you can to get back as... Do you enjoy the wee break? Well, yes and no, because honestly, I can say this hasn't been enjoyable because uh, my daughter wants to play with me and I couldn't because I've got, can't pick her up. I can't, couldn't use this arm. My wife's waiting on me hand and foot because I can't do anything. It's bloody hard. Yeah, you can only go as fast as your yeah. body's going to let you. And you've got another... You're 36, this is, I kind of keep coming back to age. It's a bit unfair as soon as- Yeah, yeah, I'm 36 now, yeah. Another 10 years or so. Yeah. Another 10 years? No, I think, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, maybe, I don't know. I, I want to sign now two years and then um, from there, I'll see how it, everything is and see. Yeah. As, at, at the moment, I'm still motivated, I still feel good. And I also sometimes think, well, if I stop, actually, what am I going to do? Steve, thank you very much. It's been Pleasure. brilliant to come here and talk to you. <laughs> yeah. Thanks so much.